Modding Super Smash Bros. has never been more popular. And despite the dozens of packs and mods out there for every Smash game under the sun, one mod consistently stands taller than the rest, Project M. And in this video, I want to tackle all of the costumes and their references and origins for Project M. But what Project M refers to nowadays is actually kind of dicey. Many packs have built off Project M, changed aspects and added characters, or dumped a ton of cosmetics into the game. So generally, there are four core layers when talking about Project M as a whole. The first is Brawl, the base game that everything is built off of, obviously. Then you have Project M, which is the original mod that started it all. On top of that, you have Legacy TE, which didn't change any mechanics of Project M, but simply added a ton of costumes and stages, as well as some additional features on top of it. And now you have Project Plus, which is built off of Legacy TE, and added more costumes, rebalanced the game, and even added a new character. So for the sake of this video, and of my sanity, we're only going to focus on Project M, Legacy TE, and Project Plus costumes that debuted in the final or most recent builds of each respective pack. We also aren't going to be talking about Brawl's base game costumes unless strictly necessary. Sometimes costumes were adjusted or removed or replaced, and we'll address those when needed. Otherwise, it's strictly going to be brand new costumes that were added to these mods. So everyone, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now, please, and let's get started. So first off, we of course have Mario. Initially, Project M removed the Wario color scheme, but with the additional color slots that were added in Legacy TE and Project Plus, this color scheme returned. So Mario's first alternate costume turns him into Dr. Mario. Rather than make this a full character in Project M, the development team decided to simply create this as an alternate costume that changes his aesthetics from fire to pills and electricity. The first Dr. Mario color is a black color scheme. This is based on the color from Melee, which is referred to as the unlicensed doctor on the Melee website. The next costume is a red costume, intended for use on the red team in team battles. In Melee, this color scheme was more on the pink side to represent Nurse Toadstool, but Project M made this a much deeper red overall to be more distinctive for the red team. After that is a green color scheme. This again used Melee's color as a base, but the Project M team took their liberties as well, essentially giving this outfit the same general color scheme as Mario's vanilla green costume. Next is Dr. Mario's blue color scheme. The outfit has minor tweaks here and there, but overall it's pretty much the same color scheme from Melee brought over into Project M. The following costume is a purple color scheme. This one is likely inspired by the Smash 4 color scheme, but it was given minor tweaks like with the gloves and the tie to make it more original. A third alternate costume was also given to Mario, the ever-popular Builder Mario, complete with his hard hat and tool belt. This comes from Super Mario Maker, but the version present here very much has the brawl aesthetic. On top of that, Builder Mario has two recolors to complete the team battle set. There's a green color and a blue color, both of which are original color schemes. Project Plus would go on to remake these colors just to spice things up. Again, they're just meant to be team colors. Every character also has two secret costumes, which are selected by holding down either the Z button or the R button on the character select screen, and we'll be going through those as well. Mario's Z secret costume is Cowboy Mario. This costume is based on Mario's appearance in Western Land in Mario Party 2 for the N64, but it's of course more detailed to match with Project M style. His R secret costume is Beach Mario. This is a costume based on a possible appearance Mario can receive in Super Mario Sunshine, with the sunglasses being unlocked after 30 shine sprites are collected, and the shirt unlocked after Delfino Plaza is flooded and subsequently drained. Next up is the eternal understudy Luigi. Luigi's first new color scheme is this one. This blue and yellow color scheme comes to us from, uh, this film, which roughly translates to Super Mario Bros. The Great Mission to Rescue Princess Peach, which was a Japanese-only film that was released in 1986. While Mario's colors were correct for the time, I guess they hadn't really nailed down Luigi's exact colors yet, because this is the outfit he has for the duration of the film, and the Legacy team thought it was a fun addition to Luigi's colors. Luigi's first full alternate costume is of course Mr. L the Green Thunder, which debuted in Project M. Mr. L is the brainwashed version of Luigi from Super Paper Mario, serving as an antagonist to Mario throughout the game. Mr. L was also given recolors to utilize in team battles, a red outfit and a blue outfit. The Project Plus team reworked these team colors to stand out more overall, rather than just changing the color of the hat and scarf. The final Mr. L recolor is a white outfit with accents of green. This was meant to be Fire Mr. L, 
a color scheme based on Fire Luigi's color scheme both in Brawl and in the wider Mario series, and I think it's a really fun costume. Luigi's third alternate costume is none other than Casino Luigi. This costume is based on Luigi's appearance in both Super Mario 64 DS and New Super Mario Bros. Both games had a minigame section based on casino games, and Luigi was featured as the dealer in this outfit. This outfit has a blue color scheme, which was designed for use on the blue team, and a red color scheme for the red team. Finally, Casino Luigi has a purple color scheme, which could have just been a nice color or vaguely designed after Waluigi's colors. Luigi's Z secret costume is Fake Peach, which dresses Luigi up in a peach wig and dress. This comes from Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga, where Mario has Luigi dress up in Peach's extra dress in order to confuse Bowletta as to which Peach is the real one. His R secret costume is Spaceland Luigi. This is based on the appearance that Luigi takes on in Mario Party 2's Spaceland board. Next, let's tackle Peach. Not literally. So first we have this outfit that gives Peach a black dress and crown, an original for Project M that can be seen as the reverse of her all-white color. The next outfit is a yellow dress. This possibly took inspiration from Peach's similar dress in Smash Ultimate, but the dress keeps its fabric appearance rather than being all shiny and bright. The final pure recolor gives Peach a red and white dress and bright red hair. This color scheme is based on her sprite from Super Mario Bros., which used this same design due to the limited colors available on the NES. The next costume is a semi alt again giving Peach red and white attire, but this time putting her hair up in a ponytail. This comes directly from her design in Super Mario 3D World when she picks up and equips a fire flower. This costume also includes fire effects instead of hearts. The other ponytail alt Peach has puts her in attire closer to her normal appearance, though with no gloves or sleeves. This is based on her look from Super Mario Sunshine, where she was going on a tropical vacation, so she likely dressed and styled her hair this way to stay cool. Her final alternate costume is also a design from the Paper Mario series, this time the Shadow Queen. The Shadow Queen is the true antagonist of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and during the course of the game she takes over Peach and adopts a darker appearance to indicate this. The Project M team took this appearance and made it a full-blown costume for Peach, complete with darkness effects replacing the hearts. Three recolors were also made to go with this alternate appearance. A green one, designed for the green team, a purple one, designed for the blue team, and finally a dark brown and orange one, which is simply a nice color to round out Peach's costumes. Peach's Z secret costume gives her an appearance based on Rosalina, but still with Peach underneath. This probably was chosen because she has a daisy color scheme, so they wanted to give her a skin that represented another Mario princess. Her R secret costume is her appearance from Super Smash Bros. Melee, where she had a somewhat, but not completely different, design. Our next character is Wario. In Project M, Wario retains all of his costumes from Brawl. However, the order has changed with Plumber Wario's costumes now coming first and Biker Wario coming second, which just keeps Wario uniform with the other plumbers. For the longest time, Wario had no additional costumes, but finally, with the increase in costumes across the board, Wario was able to have a new costume, Tycoon Wario. This costume is based off of art in WarioWare DIY, where Wario dresses up as a sort of business tycoon, hence the name. This design was also used in the Wario Award Contest, where fans could submit a fan-designed microgame. The first color scheme is an all-black outfit with accents of red, inspired by a more typical design of tuxedos in real life. The red tycoon outfit uses the same color scheme as Plumber Wario's Red All, which itself is inspired by Mario's original appearance in Donkey Kong and Mario Bros. It utilizes mostly red, with accents of blue taken from Wario's shirt, and the orange W and bow tie coming from the orange W on Wario's hat. The green outfit has two inspirations. The first is Greenhorn Forest, a level from Wario World on the GameCube that is largely green. This outfit also draws inspiration from leprechauns, short and stout supernatural beings from Irish folklore that also dress in green and are obsessed with gold, just like Wario. The blue outfit was simply designed for the blue team with no real references in mind. And lastly, we have a purple and yellow design, which naturally takes inspiration from Plumber Wario's typical color scheme. For his Z secret costume, Wario becomes Adventure Wario, an original mod that doesn't have any set in stone reference. For his R secret costume, Wario stays relatively the same. However, instead of his normal hat, he instead wears a helmet, taken directly from his design in Wario Land Super Mario Land 3 for the Game Boy. Wario's final smash, Wario Man, has received recolors that correspond with whichever costume Wario is currently using, but these are largely original to the game and are simply meant to match the transformation. The first six color schemes are also considered regular Wario Man, while the following six are considered Biker Wario Man, 
with the main difference being Wario's gloves now being fingerless. The only Wario Man color scheme with a reference is this color, which is based on the colors of the flag of Italy, naturally because Wario is Italian. The third alternate transformation for Wario Man matches up with his tycoon outfits, making him fully shirtless. This could be original to Project M, or it could be loosely inspired by this scene in Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix, with ringside wearing clothing similar to Wario Man. Except Wario Man, you know, has the complete opposite physique. Wario Man also has secret costumes. His Z secret costume turns him into Ninja Wario, an original Project M mod with no real references. The R secret costume turns him into Vampire Wario. Vampire Wario is one of the transformations that Wario can take on in Wario Land 3 for the Game Boy Color. Next up we have Yoshi. Brawl only gave Yoshi 5 of the canon colors a Yoshi can be, so Project M cranked that up to include every color that was missing. The first new color is Black Yoshi, who first appeared in Yoshi Story for the N64. After that is White Yoshi, who again first appeared in Yoshi Story. Next we have Purple Yoshi, who first appeared in Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island for the SNES. And then Orange Yoshi, who first appeared in Game & Watch Gallery 2, a collection of remade Game & Watch games for the Game Boy Color. And Brown Yoshi, who also first appeared in Yoshi's Island. The final pure recolor is a lime green Yoshi with blue scales and shoes, which is taken directly from one of Yoshi's sprites in Yoshi's Cookie on the NES. Yoshi also has three alternate costumes that aren't just recolors, and they are all inspired by other reptile-like creatures in the Mario universe. The first is a blue color, which gives Yoshi goggles and a top hat, inspired by Dory. This creature has been seen as early as Mario 64, but this specific design mostly comes from his appearance in Super Mario Odyssey. The second costume in this category is an orange Yoshi with red goggles and a top hat, who is inspired by Plessy. Plessy is another creature, possibly related to Dory, who first appeared in Super Mario 3D World in certain levels. Finally, we have a green variant, which is mostly original to Legacy TE. However, the original inspiration for the costume came quite literally from a Google search in which a green Dory was seen on Google Images. Yoshi's Z secret costume is Boshi, making him a blue Yoshi with sunglasses, a spiked necklace, and torn shoes. This is a specific Yoshi character who debuted in Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars as a rival to Yoshi. His R secret costume turns him into Pirate Yoshi, the appearance that Yoshi and all other characters take on while on the Pirate Land board. From one reptile to another, next we're talking about Bowser. Bowser's first new color scheme is an all-new red one that gives Bowser golden hair, which is pulled directly from one of Bowser's alternate colors in Mario Golf for the Nintendo 64. Afterwards, we have a green and a blue color scheme that complete the second team battle set, and they don't really have any intended references, but they look phenomenal nonetheless. The next costume is a very odd-looking one, and it's because the reference it comes from is very odd. Under a time crunch for the original release of Super Mario Bros., Shigeru Miyamoto drew up his interpretation of Bowser for the cover art. This color scheme is wildly different from Bowser's appearance even in the game, and Miyamoto stated that he was inspired by the Ox King from the film adaptation of Journey to the West. So this is what Bowser ended up looking like, and this is what this costume is based on. Bowser's alternate costume is, of course, Dry Bowser. This is the appearance Bowser takes on after falling into lava in New Super Mario Bros. DS, and it's been a staple for the series going forward. So this was a natural costume for Project M to include. The first color for this costume is Dark Dry Bowser, which isn't really a reference to anything, but it does feel like a natural costume to go for. Dry Bowser is mostly white, so here's a costume that's mostly black. The final three costumes complete the third team set. First, the green Dry Bowser, with no set reference. Blue is next, which has been dubbed Dry Ice Bowser, an idea planned for Bowser during Project M's development, but which didn't get fully created until Legacy TE. And finally, a brown and red Dry Bowser, which takes beats from fossilized dinosaur bones being mostly brown. Bowser's Z secret costume is Dark Bowser. This is a Bowser clone of sorts that gets created when the Dark Star absorbs Bowser's DNA, taking on this form that Bowser must defeat. His R secret costume is Rookie. This is an alter ego Bowser takes on after losing his memory, with the most notable difference being the mask that he wears over his head. Every Giga Bowser costume slot in the game matches up with its standard Bowser counterpart, rather than all transforming into the normal Giga Bowser. This even carries over into Dry Bowser, who has a Dry Giga Bowser form, along with every Dry Bowser recolor, and the secret costumes, which have Giga Dark Bowser and Giga Rookie costumes. Finally leaving the Mario characters, but only kinda, we next up have Donkey Kong. With the exception of one costume, Donkey Kong keeps all of his vanilla Brawl colors, 
but I think you know which one got changed. White Donkey Kong's tie was changed from red to blue, making this a firm reference to Super Kong. This is a possible form Donkey Kong can take on when the player is struggling with a particular level and activates Super Guide mode in Donkey Kong Country Returns. New alternate colors were also given to Donkey Kong, starting with this pink color, which is very likely a reference to Junior the Second, the Pink Player 2 version of Junior from Donkey Kong Junior Math for the NES. The new purple color scheme is based off of one of Donkey Kong's color swaps in Donkey Kong 64's multiplayer mode, but they turned the fur more on the purple side in order to distinguish it from the more blue color that DK already has. Next, we have a sort of minty green color scheme, which is an original color made for Legacy TE. Lastly is a sort of tan color scheme. This started out based on another color scheme from Donkey Kong 64's multiplayer, a vivid orange and purple tie, but the saturation was turned down a bit just to make things a bit easier on the eyes. Plus, it matches up with one of Diddy Kong's costumes. DK's alternate costume is Boxer Kong. Debuting in Project M, this is a costume inspired by Donkey Kong's appearance as a secret boss in Punch-Out for Wii. While in that game he only has boxing gloves, Project M went the whole hog and gave him boxing shorts and a championship belt as well. The Project M team gave this costume two additional recolors as well. The first is White DK with blue gloves and shorts and a silver belt, clearly also based off of the Super Kong color scheme. The second is Donkey Kong doing his best at a Little Mac cosplay, complete with matching gloves and shorts and his dark fur matching up with Mac's hair. Boxer Kong finally receives two recolors, a pink one with yellow clothes and a yellow one with green clothes, both of which are original creations. Donkey Kong's Z secret costume is a drastic change, turning him into Mini Donkey Kong. This is a costume based on the Mini Donkey Kongs, small robotic Donkey Kong toys from the Mario vs. Donkey Kong series. His R secret costume is Funky Kong. Funky is a member of the Kong family who bears a striking resemblance to Donkey Kong, appearing in many of the Donkey Kong games as well as other Nintendo titles such as Mario Kart Wii and Mario Super Sluggers. And next, we have to have DK's little buddy, the acrobat Diddy Kong. Diddy's first new color scheme was added in Project M, giving him orange clothing and some tan fur. This color is based off of Funky Kong from the Donkey Kong Country TV show, which definitely took its liberties with Funky's design. This green costume is original for Project M as well, being a counter to the more lime green color that Diddy has in the base game. Next is a gray color scheme, which is directly brought over from one of Diddy Kong's costumes in Smash 4 and Ultimate which itself is a reference to Donkey Kong Jr. and his color scheme in Donkey Kong Jr. Math. This is one of the few times that any of the Project M teams have directly copied straight from later official titles. And the final palette swap color is a white fur, black and purple clothed Diddy, which is an original mod with no reference. Diddy's alternate costume is Hooded Diddy. Unfortunately, for the sake of this series, this doesn't really leave us much to talk about, as there isn't really a reference here. Hooded Diddy was created for the community and it became such a popular mod that it made its way into official builds later on. There are four colors for Hooded Diddy as well, red and green to complete the team set, along with a yellow hoodie and a black hoodie. The most that can be said is that the yellow hoodie kinda looks like it might be based off a banana, but that's it. His Z secret costume gives him the armor that he wears in Mario Strikers Charged, a soccer or football game released for the Wii. Meanwhile, his R-Secret costume basically turns him into Donkey Kong Jr. Not really, but it dresses him up that way, so it's close enough, you know what I mean? Our next fighter we're talking about is Captain Falcon, who gets more love in Smash than in his own series anymore. The Captain's first new color scheme is based off of Dr. Robert Stewart, who was one of only four characters that appeared in the very first F-Zero game. Dr. Stewart was also the inspiration for the Smash 4 and Ultimate color scheme, but the Project M route was to make this costume less flashy, and it includes the accents of red and blue as well. This brown costume also comes from a pilot, this time Kate Allen. While Kate Allen first debuted in F-Zero X for the N64, this costume is more likely based off of her appearance in F-Zero GX for the GameCube. Then we have this black and blue costume, which is an original color scheme with no reference. The final recolor for this costume might not seem like it changed very much, as it's mostly just a more vivid variant of Falcon's default. This is a color scheme based on his appearance in Smash 64, which itself is inspired by Captain Falcon's appearance in F-Zero X, complete with the scarf tucked into his jacket. But Captain Falcon also has a full alternate costume, and that is none other than Retro Falcon. Retro Falcon is a variant of Captain Falcon's appearance that is fully based on his appearance from the original F-Zero for the Super Nintendo, specifically from art that appears in the manual for the game. 
The red variant of this costume is borrowed directly from Captain Falcon's vanilla color, which is based on Blood Falcon, an evil clone of Captain Falcon. I guess it just made sense that if you're going to have a retro Captain Falcon, you may as well throw in a retro Blood Falcon as well. Next, we have a green costume, which completes the team battle set, which is also borrowed pretty extensively from Captain Falcon's vanilla green color, with some minor tweaks here and there. This purple color is another original creation with no real reference, but I personally really like this costume's colors. And lastly, we have a black and gray color with accents of yellow and red. This color scheme comes from Phoenix, a galactic space police officer who first debuted as a pilot in F-Zero GX and its arcade counterpart, F-Zero AX. He also kinda looks like Captain Falcon, which is why his color scheme was chosen for this costume. Captain Falcon's Z secret costume decks him out in the Mach Rider gear, more specifically his appearance as a trophy in Super Smash Bros. Melee. Both F-Zero and Mach Rider are often forgotten about Nintendo racing games, so giving Captain Falcon this appearance makes a little bit of sense. His R secret costume removes his helmet entirely, so you can see the full face of Captain Douglas J. Falcon in the light of day. In the games, Captain Falcon doesn't first show his face until the master ending of F-Zero X. Moving into the Star Fox gang, our next fighter is Fox McCloud. First up, we have this orange color scheme, which is ripped directly from Smash 4 and Ultimate, which itself is meant to mirror Fox's orange color scheme from Melee, just with a blue scarf and obviously a totally different design. Next up, we have a green, which is based on Ultimate Fox's green color scheme, but rather than being a full one-to-one -one copy like the other previous skin, it simply served as a foundation with various tweaks being made here and there. Next is a blue color scheme for Fox, which is actually properly blue and not just purple, and it's an original mod creation with no references. For the back half of his costumes, Fox uses a totally new but old look, Melee Fox, obviously based on his appearance in Melee, which itself is based on his design from the earlier Star Fox games. Obviously, Modern Fox looks quite different, and with Project M being inspired by Melee's gameplay, it made sense to include this costume. Along with this costume are the three team colors that were used in Melee as well. Orange, green, and purple. It's hard to nail down any particular reference for orange and purple, but the green outfit is a direct reference to Fox's concept art for the original Star Fox game for the Super Nintendo. Melee Fox also receives a black color scheme, which doesn't have any reference that I can find other than dark costumes typically being a go-to for costume slots. And the final costume gives Fox a white jacket and orange pants, which is directly inspired by Fox's appearance in Star Fox for the Super Nintendo, the first in the series and of course the game that introduced Fox at all. For his Z-Secret costume, Fox becomes his father, James McCloud, the former leader of Team Star Fox. Fox and James both look incredibly similar, but James is always depicted with his signature sunglasses, which naturally gets included in this skin. His R-Secret costume goes the other direction, turning him instead into his son, Marcus McCloud. In one of the endings of Star Fox Command, Fox and Crystal settle down, marry, and eventually have a son. Marcus later goes on to the Cornarian Flight Academy and forms a new Team Star Fox to follow in his father and grandfather's footsteps. Next, we have the cool guy himself, Falco Lombardi. The first new color that Falco gets is this light blue outfit, which is pretty much an original mod creation, but the cool thing about this is that it changes Falco's feathers to be more on the white side. There are plenty of birds that match up with this feather color, but it was likely meant to be a sort of opposite to Falco's black feather costume, and the light blue just matches really, really well. Falco's next costume gives him an all pink jumpsuit. This costume takes beats from Cat Monroe, one of Falco's longtime friends and someone who has deep affection for him. She's had a couple of very different designs throughout the years, though clearly this costume was inspired by her pink appearance. And next we have this awesome purple color scheme. This color is clearly based off of Panther Carosa, with pretty much every aspect of Falco's design being changed up to match Panther's suit. Panther is a member of Team Star Wolf and is a direct rival to Falco in both Star Fox Assault and Star Fox Command. Just like with Fox, Falco 2 receives his melee appearance as a full alternate costume in Project M. This design has less intricate parts than his brawl design, and it comes from his appearance in Star Fox 64. Once again, Falco comes with team colors brought directly over from melee, but otherwise these costumes are pretty much original and don't have any references. There's also a purple color option for Melee Falco, which is a really lovely color but doesn't have any references either. Lastly, we have a pink costume, which is of course my personal favorite. While as a concept, this color doesn't have any reference to like the Star Fox series, for example, 
The actual costume was taken from a melee mod pack called the 20XX Training Pack, which offered features to improve at melee, but also included some costumes as well. Which I think is pretty cool. I like when, you know, one mod pack borrows from another mod pack, and vice versa. For his Z Secret costume, Falco turns into his appearance from Star Fox Adventures, which looks very different and frankly kind of hilarious. And his R Secret costume similarly makes him one of his other designs, but this time his appearance from Star Fox Assault. Man, there really was a time when they just didn't really know what to do with Falco's design, huh? And now of course we have to talk about Team Star Fox's number one rival, Wolf O'Donnell. Only two of Wolf's costumes from Brawl have stayed in Project M. All others have been modified in some way. First, Wolf's red costume turns his actual clothing much more red overall, and it gives his fur a reddish hue to add to the costume. His green costume gets a similar treatment, becoming a more uniform green all the way down, rather than green and yellow. Finally, in Brawl, his white costume contains red trimming that references the Wolfen. Project M has changed this to an original gold and blue trimming, since a red costume already existed. Project M also gave Wolf a full alternate costume that is a mixture of many elements of Wolf's design over the years. Elements from his Star Fox 64 appearance, brief appearance in Melee's intro video, and even his appearance from the then-unreleased Star Fox 2 all come together to create this design for Wolf, which I think looks fantastic. This alternate costume also came with red, green, and blue variants that serve as team battle colors, but no true references exist for any of these. And a new golden fur variant for this costume was also created, with the fur color potentially coming from this appearance of Wolf's portrait in Star Fox 2. Finally, Wolf has a third alternate costume. This one is named Pilot Wolf. This too is a Frankenstein sort of costume, with the outfit drawing inspiration from Wolf's appearance in the opening of Super Smash Bros. Melee, but with the head being more inspired by his appearance in Star Fox Assault. This alternate costume too has a full set of team colors with no real reference, except maybe for the blue team costume. This one vaguely, very vaguely, has a similar color scheme to Smash Ultimate Wolf's design, but that's it. As for Wolf's secret costumes, his Z secret costume is Melee Wolf. This one is fully based off of the Melee intro and trying to capture the same style that Fox and Falco have, complete with an all new head. This Wolf design comes from another Smash mod pack, Smash 2, which redesigned characters with the Melee era in mind. And his R secret costume turns him into his appearance from Star Fox Assault. While Brawl bases Wolf's design on this game, it takes its creative liberties and adds many tweaks, while this costume is just straight up his design from Assault. Next up, we have the hero himself, Link. Three new colors were added for Link's original costume, the first of which gives Link a purple tunic, which is a natural color scheme to go for. Smash 4 did this as well for its Link costumes. This purple is based off of Four Swords Link, which split Link into four parts, all wearing different colors. Green, red, and blue were all covered by Link's vanilla colors, so all that was missing was purple. Next up, we have Pink Link. Nothing more to say here really, as this was just a unique color given to him with no references, though it's one of my favorites. Finally, we have another green costume, but this time with specific changes. This costume was designed to match up with the design of Link in the artwork for the very first Legend of Zelda game for the NES, and they executed it perfectly. This costume is awesome. The Project M team also included a brand new alternate costume for Link based on his appearance as Adult Link from Ocarina of Time, and it was included in Project M because of Link's design from Melee and Smash 64 being the same design. Along with this design comes recolors that originated from Melee as well. First up, we have a red tunic, which comes from Link's appearance while wearing the Goron tunic in Ocarina of Time, allowing him to withstand intense heat. And then a blue tunic, which references the Zorda tunic from Ocarina of Time, which allows Link to breathe underwater. Finally, the Project M team included Link's black tunic from Melee as well. In Melee, this was a reference to Dark Link, but obviously Brawl Onward went ahead and made that a full costume, rather than just a colored tunic. Later on, the Legacy team included two further alternate colors for Ocarina of Time Link. The first brings Link's white tunic from Melee over, which completes the set of Melee colors. This white tunic is based on Link's sprite while wearing the blue ring in the original Legend of Zelda. And the final Link alternate costume is none other than Fierce Deity Link. This is a full alternate costume, including the face markings, armor, hair color, and even the hero shield rather than the Hylian shield. Fierce Deity Link is a form that young Link can take on in Majora's Mask when wearing the Fierce Deity Mask, turning himself into a powerful entity that bears a resemblance to adult Link. Link's Z Secret costume fully turns him into an alternate costume of NES Link, as opposed to the recolor that we talked about earlier. 
Meanwhile, his R secret costume is Hyrule Warriors Link, based on his appearance in the first Hyrule Warriors game, complete with the long blue scarf. From one Link to another, next we're talking about our resident cartoon, Toon Link. No new recolors were added, so we're jumping straight into Toon Link's first alternate costume, which is known as Outset Toon Link. This removes the cap and tunic that he typically wears and instead keeps him in his pajamas, also known as the hero's new clothes during Wind Waker's second quest. Additionally, instead of wielding the Master Sword, Toon Link wields the Hero Sword, which is the first ever sword that he got, receiving it from Orca. The shield is also no longer the Hero Shield, instead it becomes a unique wooden shield that serves as a reference to the Deku Shield that Young Link wields in Ocarina of Time. This costume also has alternate colors, with the first being a green variant of these pajamas. However, the pattern on the shirt is different for each costume. On this green shirt, the front pattern references Furore's Pearl, one of the goddess pearls collected during Wind Waker. Meanwhile, the back of the shirt contains the symbol for the Kokiri's Emerald, a spiritual stone that Young Link collects during Ocarina of Time. Both of these objects are green, hence their presence on Toon Link's shirt here. However, all of that gets thrown out the window when it comes to Project Plus, which changed up these costume's emblems to be more straightforward Wind Waker references. So this green variant instead represents the charts associated with Tingle, the Tingle chart and the Incredible charts. So as a result, Toon Link wears the Tingle emblem proudly on his shirt. Kinda weird to have this random man on your pajamas, but I guess we'll just ignore that. For the red variant of this costume, the front has the symbol for Din's Pearl, the red goddess pearl collected by Link. Meanwhile, the back of it has the symbol for the Goron's Ruby, the red spiritual stone that Young Link gets in Ocarina of Time. Project Plus's version of this costume instead represents the common charts found during Wind Waker, all of which are red with a question mark on the front. So quite appropriately, this shirt has that question mark on it. The Legacy team introduced two new colors for this costume, the first of which is a purple color scheme. This color scheme is meant to represent Low Rule in a number of ways. First, the outfit is purple, which is the thematic color for Low Rule. The emblem on the front shows a right side up and upside down Triforce, representing High Rule compared to Low Rule. Finally, the back just straight up has Ravio's hood on it, the Low Rulean counterpart to High Rule's Link. For Project Plus, this purple costume instead represents the purple Triforce charts, which are used to find shards of the Triforce. And finally, we have a black color for this costume. For Legacy TE, the costume's reference is not a reference to something from the Zelda games, but rather a fan theory. The Tetra Force is a common fan theory that believes that there are actually four pieces of the Triforce. One popular theory was that the missing center of the Triforce was intentionally left black, with one dark deity balancing out the three light goddesses. This gets represented by the four triangles on what appears to be a scale, with the scale balancing the forces of light and dark. For Project Plus, this black color scheme instead represents the Ghost Ship chart, which is needed to find and board the Ghost Ship. The chart has a skull and crossbones on it, so that's what's put on the pajama shirt. And with all of that outset origining out of the way, we can talk about Toon Link's final alternate costume, Lineback Toon Link. This outfit is inspired by Toon Link's companion in The Legend of Zelda, Phantom Hourglass, who commands the ship used to explore the region. On top of that, the sword that Toon Link wields in this costume is the Phantom Sword, which is the ultimate sword from that game. His shield has two different iterations. In Legacy TE, the shield was the Cyclone Slate, an item in Phantom Hourglass that allowed Link to travel to different locations using the wind. However, Project Plus has foregone that option, instead using the wooden shield that's obtained in the game. As an overall idea, this was most likely inspired by a costume available to Toon Link in The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, which puts him in the exact same outfit. But Project M didn't give him the awesome mustache, so big L everyone. This line bet costume also comes with a red and green color scheme, which completes the team color set, and a black color scheme, none of which have any references. Toon Link's Z Secret costume turns him into Conductor Link, a design based on Toon Link's appearance in The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Instead of using the Master Sword, this costume has Link wield the Locomo Sword, which is the ultimate sword available in Spirit Tracks, and the shield uses the Spirit Tracks shield design as well. And Toon Link's R Secret costume gives him a little buddy. His cap becomes Ezlo, the talking hat that Toon Link wears in The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Ezlo even reacts alongside Toon Link with facial expressions as well, which is nice so he's not just a deadpan face the whole time. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought it would, but we finally get to move on to Princess Zelda. Zelda's first new color is an all-white dress that is unashamedly stolen from Smash 4 Zelda's color options. This white dress is inspired by both Zelda's overworld sprite in A Link to the Past and Zelda's appearance as the goddess Hylia in Skyward Sword. The next color scheme is incredibly obvious. It's Hilda. 
This is Princess Zelda's doppelganger from the Land of Low Rule, and this color scheme is pretty much one-to-one -one placed onto the costume for Zelda. The final Twilight Princess color scheme is known as Desert Gold Zelda, which is an original creation without a reference outside of the existence of deserts in Zelda games. For her alternate costume, Zelda takes on her appearance as an adult from Ocarina of Time. This was chosen because this was her design for Super Smash Bros. Melee, and with Project M being inspired by Melee on many fronts, this just made sense as a costume, especially to match up with Link. This appearance for Zelda also comes with a set of team's colors, which are also pulled straight from Melee conceptually, and then they're improved upon wherever possible. Finally, we have the white or lavender color scheme, which is also pulled straight from Melee, but which also serves as a reference to Zelda's color scheme when Link rescues her while equipped with the blue ring in the original Legend of Zelda. And last but not least, we have a golden color scheme, which doesn't have any particular reference attached to it. Zelda's Z Secret costume dresses her up in the attire that she wore as a child during the events of Ocarina of Time. Naturally, this doesn't change up her dimensions, so she's still adult-sized, but it's a cute little costume either way. Her R Secret costume, like Link, turns her into her design for Hyrule Warriors, a very different take on the character's design than before, but an iconic one nonetheless. And you can't talk about Zelda without immediately talking about Sheik, which we are going to do right now. Sheik's first new color is directly stolen from Smash 4 and Ultimate as well, where this color pretty much exactly exists. This color scheme vaguely resembles Impa from her appearance in Hyrule Warriors, a member of the Sheikah tribe and Zelda's guardian. The next color scheme is a sort of hypothetical low rule Sheik. Project M kept the Zelda Sheik transformation as a part of their moveset, so logistically, any costume created for one also kinda needs to match for the other. So while a Sheik for Hilda doesn't canonically exist, this color scheme was still almost a must to match up with the Hilda color scheme. The trend here continues with a Golden Twilight Princess Sheik that matches up with the Golden Zelda. Sheik's full alternate costume also turns her into her appearance from Ocarina of Time, which of course is because this design was used in Melee as well. We also have the triple threat of red, green, and blue recolors in order to fully cement team colors for this costume, and the final two colors simply match up with Zelda's corresponding costumes. The lavender one is also from Melee, but exists without a reference, and the golden color also just matches with Zelda. Sheik's Z Secret costume has Sheik essentially cosplay as Impa from Ocarina of Time. Now this is a rare situation where the Zelda and Sheik costume don't necessarily match up, with the corresponding Zelda costume being Young Zelda, but there's still a relationship between these two costumes, with Impa being Young Zelda's guardian during the course of Ocarina of Time. And Sheik's R Secret costume goes back to form to match Zelda, turning her into Hyrule Warrior Sheik. The final Zelda rep to talk about is none other than Ganondorf. In Brawl, he has five additional recolors, however, Project M cuts the brown costume, which was a reference to Ocarina of Time Ganondorf. However, this was replaced by a full alternate based entirely on Ganondorf's appearance in both Ocarina of Time and the GameCube Space World tech demo, and once again, this is because that was Ganondorf's design in Melee. However, the Project M team did take creative liberties for this costume, so you'll notice differences from the model in Melee. The four alternate costumes, while executed differently in Project M, are all taken from Melee Ganondorf as well. There's a full team color set, and then a purple color scheme. Ganondorf also has a third alternate costume, which is severely different from the rest. This costume is inspired by the monstrous form that Ganondorf can take on in the Zelda series, known simply as Ganon, or sometimes Pig Ganon. This costume keeps Ganon at the same proportions as the other costumes in order to make it a tournament viable skin so naturally some liberties were taken. This default form of the costume is inspired by Ganon's appearance in A Link to the Past, even down to the sword, which is now a trident for this costume, based on the trident Ganon wields in that game. The black recolor for this appearance draws inspiration from Ganon's appearance in Twilight Princess, and the easiest way we can tell this outside of the color scheme is the glowing wound in his chest, which matches up with normal Ganondorf's appearance as well. This costume also comes with a set of team's colors, blue, green, and red. The blue team color scheme is likely borrowed from Ganon's color scheme in the Oracle games and Four Swords Adventures. And you know, maybe the green costume was slightly inspired by the CDI appearance of Ganon, but I think it's more likely that green and red were just made to complete the trio. Ganondorf's Z secret costume turns him into Phantom Ganon, a false Ganondorf that serves as a boss in many Zelda games, though this appearance is based specifically on the Ocarina of Time appearance. Meanwhile, his R Secret costume, like the other Zelda characters, is based on his appearance from Hyrule Warriors with his wicked mane of hair. Our next character is the resident Pokemon mascot, Pikachu. 
With only a grand total of four costumes in Brawl, it would have been a shock if any of them got removed in favor of something else for Project M, but fortunately, that didn't happen. Pikachu's first new costume gives him his party hat or his wizard hat, depending on who you ask. This costume originated in Smash 64, where every costume was a different color of this hat, but only the blue variant survived into Melee, so naturally Project M brought it back. But because there's already a blue costume, the Project M team decided to make it more on the purple side. The next costume is just straight up Detective Pikachu, a character from both the game and movie of the same name. There's not much more to say about that, though I do wish its voice sounded like Ryan Reynolds. The next costume gives Pikachu a pirate hat. This costume is based directly off of a Japanese promotional Pokemon card called Captain Pikachu, which gave Pikachu this hat in the card's art. After that, we have another hat. This one is Red's hat in the style from both Fire Red and Leaf Green, and the trainer from Brawl. However, the hat is so big that it squishes his floppy ears down and it gets worn sideways. Next up is Pikachu wearing the Green Harmony Scarf. This scarf is worn by all of the potential playable characters in Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon for the 3DS, with Pikachu being one of those playable characters, and it plays an important role in the game's story. The next costume is definitely one of my favorites. It rigs Pikachu up into this weird wired headband with a light bulb at the top. This is taken directly from the second ever episode of the Pokemon anime, where Pikachu is gravely injured and is hooked up to this device to monitor its electricity. A really neat thing about this costume in Project M is that anytime Pikachu uses a move with an electric effect, the light bulb will actually light up. The next costume is another trainer hat, and this time it's Chases, the male protagonist from Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. And then yet another protagonist headwear, May's bandana from Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Also, this Pikachu is a female to match May. You can tell by the shape of its tail. The next hat is a direct carryover from Melee, the cowboy hat. This was the final hat needed to include all of Melee's costumes in Project M, so it was a natural choice. Then, Pikachu has a top hat and a bow tie, which is directly inspired by the Pikachu's jukebox segment of the Pokemon anime. The coat probably would have been too much and too complicated to implement, so they just went with the hat and tie, and I think that's a good compromise. And finally, we have Pikachu wearing a pair of headphones. These headphones come from Pokemon Jukebox, a music app released for Android in 2015. While Pikachu himself doesn't wear these in the art for the app, these headphones are present right next to Pikachu, so maybe he just stole them to listen to some tunes while he's fighting. Pikachu's Z secret costume is Pikachu Libre. This form of cosplay Pikachu debuted in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire specifically for the Pokemon contests, but then it went on to be iconic enough to include as a fighter in Pokémon Tournament, and of course as a skin in Smash Ultimate as well. And yes, this Pikachu is also female. And Pikachu's R Secret costume gives him a green backpack and bandana. This is very likely inspired by Pichu's green costume from Melee, where he has a green bandana around his neck and a backpack. It's often theorized that this Pikachu evolved from the Pichu that was in Melee, so this costume is a nice reference to that theory. The backpack has some fun Easter eggs on it that are related to Pikachu. Pins of a Thunderstone, Red from Generation 1, a Pichu, Pikachu's Pokeball from the anime with a little lightning bolt on it, and a little pin of the logo on Zero Suit Samus' suit. Apparently, this last one was a nod to the mod creator, who at the time was a Zero Suit main when creating the mod but it also could be a nice nod to Pikachu and Samus' little team-up that they have in Subspace Emissary. From one Smash 64 Pokémon to another, next up we have Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff's first new costume is actually one that returns from Melee, giving Jigglypuff back her crown. Well, not her crown, since it's actually Peach's crown the whole time. But for Project M, instead of using Melee Peach's crown, they gave Jigglypuff Brawl Peach's crown. The next costume gives Jigglypuff a pair of pink fairy wings that sparkle. This is a reference to Jigglypuff's new status as a fairy-type Pokémon with the introduction of that type in Generation 6. The next costume is Jigglypuff's iconic green headband from Melee. This was actually completed and planned to be included in a future update to Project M, before the team disbanded and ceased development. The costume itself was released individually later on though, which is how we have it in official builds today. The next accessory comes from another Smash game, this time Smash 64, Jigglypuff's bow. All of her costumes in 64 were different colored bows, but just the red one makes a return. The next outfit gives Jigglypuff a hat based on Officer Jenny's hat from the Pokemon anime. To match with this, her eyes are now made red to match up with Jenny's eyes as well. And the next hat is based on yet another protagonist. This one is Dawn's hat from Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. Jigglypuff's eyes are also very slightly adjusted to match up with Dawn's eyes. This costume has no reference. It's just Jigglypuff in a beret with purple eyes. 
The next hat is worn by the Picnicker class in Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and the eyes have also been changed to match as well. This hat too is from Let's Go, from the Youngster Trainer class, with the eye color more than likely being borrowed from their shirt color. And finally is another Let's Go hat, but this one is obviously taken from Elaine, the female protagonist from those games. Jigglypuff's Z secret costume is known as El Globo, which is Spanish for The Balloon. This is an original skin meant to give Jigglypuff her own wrestler persona as a sort of counterpart to Pikachu Libre, which I think is hysterical. And Puff's R secret costume gives her facial markings that are from the episode of the Pokemon anime The Ancient Puzzle of Pokemopolis, where a giant Jigglypuff among other giant Pokemon are featured. Our next Pokemon to talk about is Mewtwo, who unlike everyone we've talked about before, wasn't in Brawl, which means we get to talk about all of his costumes. Mewtwo's first color scheme is a full shiny color. While this costume existed back in Melee, its eyes were purple there, so in PM they actually made this a fully faithful shiny Mewtwo. The next color is a red Mewtwo, which is a color scheme also from Melee. This Melee color was inspired by one of the color schemes that Mewtwo can possibly have in Pokemon Stadium if the Pokemon has a nickname. But instead of giving it a general hue, this whole costume is cranked up to be very red. The same can be said for the blue costume, which is also a returning costume from Melee. A blue hue is possible in Stadium if Mewtwo has a nickname, so Mewtwo is cranked up to be fully blue in Smash. The next recolor is a gray Mewtwo, which is potentially drawing inspiration from Pokemon Red, Green, and Blue, having all black and white sprites. And the final normal Mewtwo recolor gives it this weird yellow hue all over it, which is a direct reference to Mewtwo's sprite in Pokemon Yellow. This game was color enhanced when played on a Game Boy Color, so Pokemon had actual individual palettes, and this was Mewtwo's. Introduced in Project M, Mewtwo's first alternate costume is none other than Armored Mewtwo. This is a costume based on the Pokemon anime, specifically a cameo appearance in the episode Battle of the Badge, and then of course in Pokemon the first movie. Fun easter egg here, on the back of the chest plate is PKMN150, referencing Mewtwo as the 150th Pokemon. Next we have a gold recolor of this costume, which features the grey Mewtwo underneath. This one however is just a totally original creation. Then we have a dark armor with a red Mewtwo underneath. This color scheme matches up with the color scheme for Team Rocket, who plays a role in the creation and subsequent escape of Mewtwo. Following the trend of evil Pokemon team based skins, this next one is named Plasma Armored Mewtwo. A shiny Mewtwo in copper armor with the Team Plasma logo on the back of the chest plate. And this one is Aqua Armored Mewtwo, a blue Mewtwo with appropriately colored armor that has the Team Aqua logo on it. Together with Rocket and Plasma, these three make up a second set of team colors. Lastly is none other than Shadow Mewtwo, who was first introduced in Pokken Tournament. This is a form that Mewtwo took on when a Shadow Synergy Stone merged with it and took control over it. And naturally, this form of Mewtwo also has a set of team colors, none of which have any references. For his Z Secret costume, Mewtwo becomes Shadow Armored Mewtwo. Instead of being based on Shadow Mewtwo from Pokken, this Mewtwo is given the same color palette as Shadow Lugia the cover Pokemon from Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. And his R secret costume is Mega Mewtwo X, the form that Mewtwo can take on when he Mega Evolves using the Mutanite X, a phenomenon introduced in Generation 6 of Pokemon. Project M famously has separated all three of Pokemon Trainer's Pokemon into individual slots, so first up we're talking about Squirtle. Squirtle is a rare case where none of his costumes from Brawl were retained in Project M, as the dev team opted to give him far more distinct colors, which I definitely appreciate. Squirtle's green color scheme is based on Turtwig, a fellow turtle-based starter Pokemon. The red color scheme is based off of Torkoal, a tortoise Pokemon, though the eyes probably come from Charmander since Torkoal never opens its eyes. This yellow one is definitely based off of a Koopa Troopa, which while it isn't a Pokemon, is yet another turtle-based Nintendo character. This pink color scheme possibly comes from Lickitung, a fellow Generation 1 Pokemon. Next up we have a color scheme based off of Shiny Blastoise. Using the fully evolved Shiny was likely because Squirtle's Shiny color is still a bit too similar, but having a Blastoise serve as a purple color works great. The next color scheme references a Kappa, a turtleish mythical creature in Japanese folklore. Next up is this dark blue, which is based on Tortuga and Caracosta, two turtle Pokemon that were introduced in Generation 5. Following that is a color scheme based off of Turtonator, another turtle Pokemon. And finally we have a color scheme inspired by Oshawa, a Generation 5 Pokemon who is also a water starter, just like Squirtle. Project M's alternate costume for Squirtle is Shinobi Squirtle, dressing him up as, well, a shinobi ninja. This outfit has a couple points of origin. 
The first is the obviously funny Ninja Turtle reference, but they obviously didn't make it a direct TMNT reference and instead went for something more general. On top of this, it was a sort of loose reference to Greninja, another water starter, but one who is fully based on a ninja. So they just took that ninja idea and turned Squirtle into a ninja too. This costume also has a white color scheme, likely inspired by other appearances that ninjas have had in media. Shinobi Squirtle also has a red and a green costume, which along with default Shinobi, complete the team color set. And finally, we have a black and purple color scheme, which is based off of Koga, the poison-type gym leader of Fuchsia City in Kanto, who is known as the Poisonous Ninja Master. Squirtle's Z secret costume is Ninja Squirtle, which is clearly inspired by the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, just with a black mask instead of one any particular color, because, you know, Squirtle doesn't want to pick favorites. His R secret costume gives him a blue scarf, which comes from the cover art for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue Rescue Team. The next Pokemon is of course Ivysaur, who is much easier to cover. Like Squirtle, all of Ivysaur's color schemes from Brawl were adjusted in some way to make them more distinct from one another, but unfortunately, very few of these have references, and they just serve as the typical colors that you might expect. There are three exceptions though that do have references. First, we have the green color scheme, which is taken straight from Ivysaur's shiny colors in the core Pokemon games. Second is this green color scheme, which is inspired by Bayleaf. Both Bayleaf and Ivysaur are the second stage evolutions of the grass starter for their respective generation, so I think this is a really nice reference. And then we have this brown color scheme, which is inspired by Tropius, a grass-type Pokemon from the third generation of games. Ivysaur's full alternate costume is an unbelievably creative option, turning Ivysaur into the Substitute doll. Substitute is a move in Pokemon that diverts the attention of the enemy elsewhere, and this has been represented in the core series of games by a small green monster-looking doll since Generation 3. This costume for Ivysaur gives it the qualities of the doll, including the fuzzy and felt-like properties that you would expect from a doll, as well as matching the eyes and things like that. There are also orange, blue, yellow, and pink variations for this costume, which don't have any particular references either, but are honestly just fantastic colors all around. I mean, genuinely, I love this alternate costume. Ivysaur's Z Secret costume has Ivysaur dress up similarly to a Vileplume, a fellow grass poison type Pokemon from the first generation. Notably, instead of the bulb on Ivysaur's back, it now has Vileplume's gigantic petals. And the R Secret costume makes Ivysaur almost a regional variant, with a very desert-like color scheme and a cactus on its back replacing the bulb. And I would guess this typing would be like grass ground or something? I don't know, but it's a really cool costume. Incredibly creative. And the final trainer Pokemon that we have is Charizard. Every single one of Charizard's recolors are based on other Pokemon. The gray color scheme is Aerodactyl, another dragon-like Pokemon, but one that isn't the dragon type. The blue one is based off of Golbat, who has similar wings to Charizard. Green comes from Tyranitar. And then this black one is of course based off of Charizard's shiny sprite from Generation 3 onward. This bright blue-green color is based off of Salamence. And this yellowy one comes from Dragonite. Purple is Naganadel, a dragon-type Ultra Beast from Generation 7. Red comes from Crocodile, And green is based off of Flygon. Charizard's alternate costume is Armored Charizard, based off of the appearance of a Charizard seen in the opening of the Pokemon movie Lucario and the Mystery of Mew. This Charizard was a part of an army of Pokemon preparing to engage in battle against another army of Pokemon. This costume also has alternate colors, starting with this black one. The black coloration of this isn't actually a shiny Charizard, though I wouldn't blame you if you thought that. This costume actually gets its color scheme from Agron. Agron is known as the Iron Armor Pokemon, so it makes sense for a costume based on armor to have this color scheme. Next, we have a purple recolor, which comes from Nidoking. And then we have a green one, which is based off of either Rayquaza or maybe even Mega Rayquaza. And finally, we have a yellow color, which is based off of Haxorus. Both the Z and R secret costumes are Charizard's Mega Evolutions, both introduced in Pokemon X and Y. On top of the individual references for Squirtle and Charizard's alternate costumes, the Project M dev team had an overarching theme that they planned for all three trainer Pokemon before they ended development. Each Pokemon's costume was meant to represent basic RPG classes. Squirtle, being the ninja, was a loose representation of the thief class. Charizard, in his armor, was meant to represent the warrior class. Ivysaur is the only one who was left out in official development, but the plan was for Ivysaur to have an alternate costume that turned it into a wizard, representing mage classes. But unfortunately, Ivy Sorcerer never got to see the light of day. 
The final Pokemon in Project M is Lucario, and the dev team decided to go the route of not making him just various shades of blue, leaving only one costume from Brawl, his all-white costume. First, we have a bright red costume, which serves as the red team color. Then we have a black Lucario, which is meant to be an opposite to the all-white color. And then we have a green color, obviously for use on the green team. Next, we have a bright yellow color, which is obviously Lucario's shiny sprite color scheme, which is one of my personal favorites, though they did get the eye color wrong, but you know, I'll give them a pass on that one. Lucario also receives a second set of team colors in orange, different green, and purple, all of which are original creations without any references. And then we have a brown Lucario, which again, has no reference. All of the references lie in Lucario's alternate costume, which is Gi Lucario. This dresses Lucario up in a karate gi with sparring gloves, which comes from the Black Belt class in Pokemon. Black Belt trainers tend to use fighting Pokemon in battles, so with Lucario being a fighting type, it's perfect. The back of Lucario's gi has the symbols for both the fighting and steel types, referencing Lucario's typing. The belt around Lucario's gi is the Expert Belt, an item that boosts fighting type moves, and the band around his head is the Focus Band, an item that sometimes prevents the holder from fainting. Overall, this costume can also be considered a reference to Ryu from Street Fighter, especially considering Lucario's moveset philosophy in Project M is similar to traditional fighting game characters. For this costume's first recolor, the gi is turned to more of a dark gray that instead has the cobble badge symbol on the back, which is the badge for the fighting type Veilstone Gym in Sinnoh, where the leader actually uses a Lucario. The headband is also changed, now the Choice Band, an item that boosts the holder's attack but locks it into using only one move. Following the Ryu reference, our final three costumes are all references to Street Fighter. First is Dan Hibiki, who first appeared in Street Fighter Alpha and wears this signature pink gi. For this costume, Lucario wears the Muscle Band, which boosts the power of physical moves. Since Dan is typically a weaker fighter, it makes sense to give this costume the band that would help boost power. The emblem on the back of the gi is for the Rumble Badge, from the Shalor City Fighting Type Gym in Kalos, where the leader, Karina, has two Lucarios. The next is a shiny Lucario in a red gi, which is an obvious reference to Ken Masters, Ryu's rival. On top of the red gi, Lucario being its yellow shiny is the perfect reference to Ken's blonde hair. The back emblem is the same as the default costume, referencing the fighting and steel type. Finally, the headband is the Focus Sash, an item that prevents the holder from being one-hit KO'd. Since the Ryu costume wears the Focus Band, it made sense to give Ken the Focus Sash. Finally, we have an outfit that references Sean Matsuda, who first appeared in Street Fighter 3 New Generation and is one of Ken's pupils. Sean wears a yellow gi with red gloves, which this Lucario also wears. The back emblem on this outfit is the Knuckle Badge, which comes from another fighting type gym, the Doofer Gym in Hoenn. And the headband worn here is the Choice Scarf, which increases the holder's speed but locks it into only using one move. Lucario's Z secret costume turns him into Mega Lucario. This Mega Evolution was introduced in Pokemon X and Y, and it even serves as Lucario's final smash in Smash 4 and Ultimate. And his R secret costume turns him into Robo Lucario, which isn't based on anything, and it's just a neat costume. So next up we have Samus, and Samus has a lot going on, so we're gonna have to split it up by game this time around. So for both Vanilla Project M and Legacy TE, the suit that Samus had in Brawl remains intact. So first, Samus now has a brand new dark blue color scheme, which is based off of Dark Samus. The Project M team also gave Samus full alternates based on a variety of suits that she has, rather than leaving these as basic color schemes. First is the Dark Suit, which debuted in Metroid Prime 2 Echoes and replaces the color scheme with a full suit. Then we have the Light Suit, which was also debuted in Metroid Prime 2. The Fusion Suit debuted in Metroid Fusion for the Game Boy Advance and also replaces the simple recolor. And finally, we have a Retro or Classic Power Suit, which is primarily designed with Samus's design from the very first Metroid game. Legacy TE built upon this foundation with even more of Samus's suits. First, they added a recolor for Samus's Phazon Suit, which first appeared in Metroid Prime. They also gave recolors to Fusion Suit Samus to allow for use as team colors. She has a green and pink variation of the suit when the Fusion Suit gets upgraded with the Varia Suit, and this orange and yellow Fusion Suit, which is unofficially named the Omega Suit, the final suit upgrade received at the end of Metroid Fusion. The Retro Suit was also given a green color and a purple color, also for use in team battles. And finally, the Legacy team implemented one last suit, which was actually a plan by the Project M dev team before development ceased the P.E.D. suit, which first debuted in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. 
Moving on to Project Plus, they keep a lot of these costumes, but the biggest change is that Samus's Varia suit has been completely reworked. This suit now includes elements from the Metroid Prime series, as well as Metroid Samus Returns, the Metroid 2 remake for 3DS. Pretty much every recolor the old suit had has been remade for this new suit as well, with one exception. We now have a brand new blue color inspired by the blue costume in Metroid Prime 2 Echo's multiplayer mode. This color itself was possibly inspired by Armstrong Houston, a character in the Super Metroid comics in Nintendo Power Magazine. Finally, Project Plus included one last recolor, this time for the fusion suit. The purple and blue recolor when the fusion suit gets upgraded with the gravity suit. I mean, it was the only one missing, so how could they not add it? Because of this full-scale replacement of Brawl Samus, the default suit is now Samus's Z-Secret costume, so you can relive that costume if you want. And Samus's R-Secret costume is her power suit from Metroid Prime, which she is forced to use when an explosion conveniently damages every other upgrade. Zero Suit Samus, like her armored self, has quite a lot going on through the history of Project M, so once again, we'll have to tackle this chronologically. So in Project M, all of Zero Suit Samus's brawl color schemes remain intact. Additionally, the dev team created three alternate costumes for her. The first gives Zero Suit a white outfit with a different hairstyle, which comes from one of the possible endings of Metroid Fusion. This one is for playing the game on normal mode in under two hours with 100% items. Next up is a similar costume, but this time Samus is given a blue outfit outfit. This is also from a Metroid Fusion ending, but for playing under 2 hours on hard mode with 100% items. Finally, we have the famous Justin Bailey costume, which is significantly different from every other costume. This costume is featured in the second best ending you can get in Metroid for the NES, beating the game in under 3 hours. The name Justin Bailey comes from the use of a cheat code that uses this phrase that allows you to play the game using this appearance. The Project M team actually had big plans for Zero Suit Samus before their sudden shutdown, and that was a total rework of her design. You'll notice that this looks quite similar to her Smash 4 design, and that's because it takes similar design beats like Metroid Other M and Metroid Zero Mission. Fortunately, despite never dropping in an official Project M patch, this model was eventually released and was able to be included in Legacy TE. Every one of Zero Suit's costumes has been updated, with this new design serving as the foundation for even the alternate costumes. Legacy TE also included a couple of new colors as well. First, we have a black outfit, which is inspired by the best ending of Super Metroid, achieved by finishing the game in under three hours. The second Metroid Fusion costume has also been given green and red recolors. While these also serve as team colors, their main purpose is to match up with the fusion suits that exist on Samus, as Samus and Zero Suit are still linked in the code of Project M. The same is true for the Justin Bailey costume, which has been given green and blue colors to match up with Retro Samus's green and blue team colors. And finally, Legacy TE included this orange costume, which you'll notice is also in Smash 4 and Ultimate. This costume is based on Samus's appearance in multiple endings of Metroid Zero Mission, a remake of Metroid 1 with some additional content. And last but not least is the single addition that Project Plus added for Zero Suit, a purple color scheme for the Metroid Fusion outfit. This is designed to match up with the purple Fusion Gravity Suit that was also added to Project Plus. Zero Suit Samus's Z-Secret costume is Cadet Samus. This gives her a costume based on her appearance in Metroid Other M for the Wii. Her R-Secret costume is just like normal Samus's, which restores her original vanilla brawl costume to now serve as a secret one. Our next character to talk about is Ness from Earthbound, and I think that all of his costumes are really fun. First, we have a purple and white outfit with a ribcage on his t-shirt. This outfit is based off of the Yes Man Jr. enemy in Earthbound, who has the same color scheme complete with the ribcage on his front. This is one of the earlier enemies in the game, found in Ness's town of Onet. Next, we have a pink color scheme, and as you can tell by the shirt, it's a reference to Paula. Paula is a fellow psychic user and is the first party member that Ness teams up with in Earthbound. After that is a brown and green color scheme, with a runaway dog sprite on the shirt. The runaway dog is an enemy that can be found just near Ness's house at the very, very beginning of Earthbound. The final recolor is based off of the Starmen, a race of robotic aliens. These are incredibly iconic enemies in the Mother series, and Ness's shirt has the exact same pattern. Ness's alternate costume for Project M is Pajama Ness. Ness has this appearance in the beginning of Earthbound and in Western releases while he's in Magicant. While using this skin, Ness's baseball bat becomes the Cracked Bat, the first bat he ever receives in Earthbound. This outfit also has team colors. The red team outfit puts Ness in red, black, and white checkered pajamas, which is an incredibly common style for real-world pajamas. The green pajamas, meanwhile, are also fairly realistic pajamas, and the white symbol all over them is the Mother Series logo. 
Next, we have a purple and blue set of pajamas, a costume that doesn't have any references as far as I can tell. And lastly, we have an orange and black set of pajamas. This design is based off of the background during a battle with the final Starman, one of the final enemies encountered in the game. For Ness's Z secret costume, he dresses up in a costume based on Pooh, the final party member that you get in Earthbound. As for his R-Secret costume, Ness becomes Ninten, the protagonist for Mother 1 or Earthbound Beginnings. Ninten has had a wide variety of designs over the years, but this specific costume is based off of a 1989 live-action commercial for Mother 1. Next, we have the boy from nowhere, Lucas. Starting off with his alternate costume, Project M gave him a costume dubbed Commander Lucas. This is based off of the events of Mother 3, where Lucas is mistaken as the masked man, one of the game's antagonists. While using this costume, Lucas's stick is now replaced with the masked man's energy sword. This costume is also of course given team colors, red and white, green and yellow, and purple and black. The final recolor for this costume properly turns him into the masked man, but without his helmet, which is revealed to be Klaus, Lucas's twin brother. The final alternate costume pretty heavily changes Lucas's appearance. This is a costume created from Lucas's design from the scrapped Earthbound 64, which would eventually be revived as Mother 3 for the Game Boy Advance. Lucas was still the main character of this version of the game, and many elements from Earthbound 64 transferred over to Mother 3. This costume also has team's colors, with a red costume, a green costume possibly inspired by this enemy, and a blue costume possibly inspired by Duster's color scheme. Lucas's Z-Secret costume dresses him up in a cute little onesie. This onesie is based off of the Ultimate Chimera, an enemy that is encountered during the events of Mother 3. And his R-Secret costume turns him properly into the Masked Man, complete with the helmet and all the doodads he has before he ends up being unmasked. Next up, we have Kirby, who gets a bunch of new colors in the Jump to Project M. First is this gray and orange color, which is the carbon spray paint from Kirby and the Amazing Mirror and Kirby Squeak Squad. Next, he has the grape spray paint from those same games as well. This new green color is the emerald spray paint. And this is the cherry. This one is chocolate. And lastly, snow. Kirby actually does have an alternate costume, however, which gives him a mean face and a headband. This is Fighter Kirby, which is a copy ability that Kirby can obtain in many Kirby games. And what better ability for him to have for a fighting game than Fighter? Next, he has a recolor for Fighter Kirby, which uses the Citrus Spray Paint color scheme. And finally, another recolor using the Sapphire Spray Paint color scheme. These final two colors got some cosmetics changed in Project Plus, and while they fill the same roles for team colors, they're now more on the original side for the colors than any solid reference. Kirby's Z-Secret costume turns him into Yarn Kirby. This skin is based off the appearance that Kirby has in Kirby's Epic Yarn, though obviously with some marked differences as they can't fully make Kirby two-dimensional. Meanwhile, his R-Secret costume is Classic Kirby. This turns Kirby into a design that is similar to his absolute earliest appearances in the games and various artwork. Next up is Meta Knight. Meta Knight's first new costume is a green color with pink eyes. This color scheme is inspired by Blade Knight, a recurring enemy in the Kirby series who was at one point a servant to Meta Knight and who also similarly wields a sword. The next costume is a Golden Palette, which is based on Parallel Meta Knight. This is the Another Dimension counterpart to Meta Knight, who first debuted as a boss in Kirby Star Allies. The next costume is actually a semi-alt, giving Meta Knight the color scheme and mask of Galacta Knight. Galacta Knight first debuted in Kirby Superstar Ultra as the boss of Meta Nightmare Ultra, and is the greatest warrior in the universe, who is sealed away for fear of his strength. The next costume is Dark Meta Knight, another semi-alt. Dark Meta Knight is the Mirror World counterpart of Meta Knight and serves as an antagonist in Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. Although this costume also debuted in Smash Ultimate, the Project M costume predates it. Finally, Meta Knight has a full alternate costume. At the time of this costume's creation, it was simply known as Concept Art Meta Knight, designed off of this artwork featured in the Kirby 20th Anniversary art book. When the Project M dev team created this costume, it was under the idea that this was concept art for Meta Knight, as it appeared alongside Meta Knight in that art book. Nowadays though, it seems to be that the design was actually for a new knight that would have appeared in the cancelled Kirby game for GameCube. However, Kirby fans today will now know this design as Morpho Knight. This concept art design was reused later in Kirby Star Allies for a new boss, coming full circle all these years later. Morpho Knight also receives four recolors. The first two complete the team set, a green color, and a blue color. Then there's this really sick white and gold color, and finally a purple color. None of these costumes really have any references, they were just recolors that were made that looked good enough to include. 
Meta Knight Z Secret costume turns him into NES Meta Knight. For his R Secret costume, Meta Knight dons a samurai appearance. This is the design Meta Knight uses in Samurai Kirby, a bonus game in several of the Kirby titles. And now on to the final Kirby character, DDD. DDD's first new color is this snazzy orange one, which doesn't have any reference. Next is this green color outfit, with his sash featuring Sparky, an enemy that first debuted in Kirby's Adventure for the NES. Next up we have a really lovely purple, blue, and white color. This is based off of concept art for Parallel DDD from Kirby Star Allies. Naturally, some creative liberties are taken for the Smash costume, but the inspiration is there nonetheless. And the final base costume recolor is a black and red outfit with a giant eye. This is a costume based off of Dark Matter, one of the main antagonists throughout the Kirby series. King DDD has also been possessed by Dark Matter, making this a nice sort of double reference. DDD's alternate costume turns him into Shogun DDD. This alternate costume is based off of Samurai Kirby, a subgame from Kirby Superstar and Superstar Ultra. All characters who appear in this subgame take on various samurai based appearances, including King DDD. There is also a green recolor and a blue recolor for this outfit, serving as a second set of team colors. And last but not least, we have a golden color and a black color for the Shogun outfit, neither of which have references but round out the alternate costume nicely. For his Z-Secret costume, DDD becomes his alter ego, Masked DDD. This is a powered up form DDD will frequently take on, offering him more health and new abilities. This form first debuted in Kirby Superstar Ultra and is DDD's final smash in Smash Ultimate. His R-Secret costume is Shadow DDD, an evil doppelganger of DDD that emerged from the Dimension Mirror in Kirby Triple Deluxe. Next, we're moving to the Fire Emblem characters, starting with your boy, Marth. For the standard Project M, Marth actually lost one of his brawl colors, the bright blue one, referencing one of his older appearances. However, with the expansion of the number of costume slots, this color scheme was restored in Legacy TE and Project Plus. Project M replaced that color though with this purple color scheme. While this was done to give Marth better color variety, it's also likely that the purple color was chosen due to purple being the color of royalty, and with Marth being a prince, that would just line up perfect. Marth's first alternate costume gives him an outfit based off of Sigurd, the main character for the first generation of Fire Emblem Genealogy of the Holy War. This costume also comes with team colors, but these actually get references. The red color scheme is based off of Eldigan, one of Sigurd's close friends. The green color takes inspiration from Quan, another of Sigurd's friends. And finally, the blue color scheme is inspired by Byron, Sigurd's father. Marth also gets a second alternate costume, which has him cover up his head in a hood, as though he's trying to hide. From everything I've looked up, I don't know that this has any reference, and it was probably chosen because it's just one of the most popular Marth mods. This costume also was given a red and green swap for team battles, and a brown color scheme, once again, all original. For his Z-Secret costume, Marth becomes Prince Marth, a costume based off of his earliest design where, you know, he doesn't wear pants. This design comes from Marth's appearance in the first Fire Emblem game, Fire Emblem, Shadow Dragon, and the Blade of Light. Marth's R-Secret costume is his more modern design, which shifted around the time of Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, the DS remake of the first Famicom title. This is also the design that Marth uses in Smash 4 and Ultimate, as well as in other Fire Emblem appearances. Alright, next up we got Roy, the first ever original character created for Project M. Roy's design is largely based on his appearance in Melee, although with tweaks and updates to keep in line with Brawl's art style. On top of this, all of Roy's Melee color schemes are brought over into Project M as well, with all of their references. First up, we have a green and brown color scheme, based on the ally or other units from Fire Emblem games. Roy can also have this color scheme in Fire Emblem The Binding Blades Link Arena mode. The red costume represents the enemy units, though Roy can also have this color scheme in Link Arena and the blue color scheme comes from the player units in Fire Emblem games. As an overall costume, this gold color was brought over from Melee as the final costume. However, in Project M, it is slightly adjusted to be a reference to Bors, one of Roy's allies in The Binding Blade. Next is an all-new black color scheme, which represents Gal. Gal is one of the antagonists of The Binding Blade, serving as a boss towards the end of the game. Next up is Pink Roy, and while it does resemble Marcus's armor from The Binding Blade, the developers of TE actually intended this to be a cheeky Roy Koopa reference as well. When Fire Emblem Roy was added as DLC in Smash 4, people were concerned about confusion with Roy Koopa, so this could be a reference to that. Next is Purple, which was plucked straight from Smash 4 and Ultimate. 
This color is a reference to Zephiel, the primary antagonist of The Binding Blade. And finally, we have White Roy, which is a reference to Zealot, a playable paladin available in The Binding Blade. So now we hit a bit of a development snag once again. In Project M 3.5, Roy was given a new alternate color that referenced his appearance in Fire Emblem Awakenings DLC, where his design was considerably different. The Project M dev team revealed that Roy would eventually have a full-on alternate costume based off of this appearance, but as you might expect, development ceased soon after and the costume was never officially implemented. However, the mod was eventually finished and released to the public, and it has since made its way into Legacy TE and Project Plus as Roy's official alternate costume. This costume also has red and green color schemes, serving as team colors while also referencing enemy and allied units. Next up we have a sort of grey and blue costume, which is a clear reference to Anigo from Fire Emblem Awakening, and I have to say this color scheme looks really good on this version of Roy. Finally, there are two original colors, gold and black. Though I will say gold is possibly inspired by the melee color as well, but who knows. Roy's Z Secret costume is a costume that was created based on concept art for Roy, with the most notable difference being the chest plate being fairly different, and other little changes here and there. Finally is his R Secret costume, which is based on Roy's original artwork for the Binding Blade, though this mod keeps Roy's head from Project M rather than making him look a bit younger. Next we have the final Fire Emblem character in Project M, Ike. For his base costume, Ike only has one additional color scheme, this nice purple one. I don't think there's a reference here, but if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. But Ike also has a full alternate costume, dressing him up in a big ol' set of armor. Like Marth, this costume is also based off another Fire Emblem character, this time Hector, from his appearance in Fire Emblem The Blazing Blade. Hector was a close friend to Eliwood, Roy's father. Nearly every recolor for the armor is also based on a heavily armored character from Fire Emblem. The red color is based off of Zelgius, an antagonist in both of Ike's games. Next is green, which I really hesitate to say has a reference, as while there are many characters that wear green, none of them really hit this exact combination. And finally we have a black one, which is based off of the Black Knight, another big antagonist from Ike's games. Legacy TE also introduced a new alternate costume as well. This costume is based on Ike's father, Rail, who dies during the events of Path of Radiance. The creation of this costume is also likely inspired by Fire Emblem Heroes, where Ike, Brave Mercenary, also features Ike wearing Grail's clothing. This costume also has recolors, with the first being a red and white color scheme. This is based on Titania, the deputy commander of the Grail Mercenaries and one of Ike's allies. Next is a green swap, which is based on Shinon, an archer and also a member of the Grail Mercenaries, though that gets a little dicey later on during the games. Finally, we have a purple and blue color, which is based on Zhark, another ally of Ike's throughout the events of his games. Ike's Z Secret costume is a recolor based on Ike's appearance when he becomes a lord in Path of Radiance, though naturally, since this is just a recolor, it has some creative liberties taken. Meanwhile, his R Secret costume is Ike Climber. This costume was a part of the Project M dev team's April Fools video in 2014, where they jokingly introduced a new duo character of the Ike Climbers. While this naturally never came to be, the costume made its way into Project M as a secret costume, which is just awesome. Alright, so next we're moving on to Mr. Game & Watch. Game & Watch's vanilla brawl colors are interesting because while they all get changed, they really just get brighter more than anything. There are some changes, like border colors, but all of these are mostly the same color, just more vivid, which is a welcome change. For his first actual new color scheme, we have a grey color with a blue border, which is based off of one of the physical Game & Watch console's color schemes. Next we have an orange color, which doesn't have a reference. And then we have a monochrome green color, which could very easily be a reference to the green color of the original Game Boy screen. Next we have a red velvet color which has no reference, and a brown color, also with no reference. Then we have a monochrome grey, which possibly references the similar color to the screen of a Game & Watch console. This color was also seen in both Smash 4 and Ultimate. Next we have a pink color and a lavender color, neither of which have any references. And finally we have this teal color, which was also seen in Smash 4 and Ultimate. This color is based on the color of the backlit screen on the Game Boy Light, once again referencing the Game & Watch as the Game Boy's predecessor. Game & Watch's Z Secret costume turns him into Rainbow Mr. Game & Watch. Meanwhile, his R Secret costume is a white recolor. This one is just meant to be the opposite of default Game & Watch, as if you applied an inverted filter to him. Next is the robotic operating buddy himself. 
Forgoing any brand new recolors, Rob jumps straight into it with alternate costumes. His first alternate costume is Mario Kart Rob. Rob was famously the last unlockable character in Mario Kart DS, even predating his appearance in Brawl. This costume pays homage to that by replacing Rob's base with a standard cart, just like Mario Kart DS does. Rather than have Rob's emblem on the cart for the costume, the DS logo was placed there to represent the console that this costume comes from. This costume also has a set of team colors, though the red and green costumes don't really have any references. The logos on the front of each cart are also replaced. The red costume has the Wii logo, and the green has the GameCube logo. Finally, we have the blue and red color. This is a reference to the F-Zero series and the Blue Falcon, Captain Falcon's own vehicle. This is further cemented by the logo on the front being the F-Zero and Mario Kart 8 logos sort of combined. This reference was possibly given to Rob because F-Zero is represented in Mario Kart 8, just like Rob was represented in Mario Kart DS. The next alternate costume is Virtual Boy Rob. This costume replaces Rob's head with that of a Virtual Boy, another physical peripheral that Nintendo released, and changes up his body color to match. In fact, if you manipulate the camera to peek into the Virtual Boy viewport, you can see that Mario Tennis is being played, one of the few games that got released for this console. This costume also changes the name to Virtual Boy on the base, and it includes the Nintendo support phone number in the same spot as the real Virtual Boy. The next alternate costume is Wii Rob. This takes the same beats as Virtual Boy Rob, replacing his head instead with a Nintendo Wii console, the console that Brawl and thus Project M are played on. This costume also has a really neat easter egg, and it goes somewhat unnoticed if you aren't looking for it. During Rob's hit animation, if you pause the game and orient the camera, you can see that a disc has popped out, and that disc is none other than Super Smash Bros. Brawl. This costume also has three recolors. First is a black Wii, which is an official Wii color that was released. When hit with this costume, the disc inside is instead revealed to be Wii Sports Resort, a game that came bundled with certain editions of the black Wii. The next color is a red Wii Rob. This too was an official Wii color, released to commemorate the 25th anniversary of Super Mario Bros. When hit, the Wii console pops out a new Super Mario Bros. disc, and you guessed it, that game was also bundled with these red Wiis. Finally, we have a green Wii Rob, the only color to not actually exist officially. This console pops out the disc for Super Mario Galaxy 2. Rob's Z-Secret costume continues the trend, replacing Rob's head with a GameCube. And finally is his R-Secret costume, which as you might have guessed is N64 Rob. And this Rob has a fun game easter egg too, but you don't need to get hit for this one. The cartridge N64 Rob has in is none other than the original Smash 64. Next up we have the daring duo, the Ice Climbers. Jumping straight into their alternate costume, the Ice Climbers get dressed up in these little polar bear onesies. The polar bear is an iconic enemy from their game, so dressing the Icies up in cute little onesies that match up with their default colors is just great. These costumes also have a set of red, green, and blue recolors for use in team battles, though these don't really have any references. The final recolor for this costume is a brown color, making them look like real-life brown bears. This recolor was also actually a part of a recolor pack inspired by various sweets, so Nana was inspired by an Animal Crackers color, while Popo was a sort of chocolate and caramel inspired color. The Ice Climbers also have an additional alternate costume, which had a little controversy. The costume originally was the Communist Climbers. This was seen as a little too much for the Legacy devs, so they sort of stripped it of any political affiliation and renamed it to the Tundra Climbers. The Tundra Climber costume also receives a red, green, and blue color scheme to be used in team battles. For their Z-Secret costume, the Climbers receive a plaid pattern on their parkas, a pattern often associated with warm clothing and their R-Secret costume dresses them up as the real Ice Climbers as the mod is named. Basically, it just gives them clothing and equipment that one might wear while actually climbing a mountain in real life. Next up, let's talk about Pit. Pit actually has a couple of changes to his original brawl colors. The first is Pit's red costume, which has been given some tweaking in order to make it stand out more. The original brawl color was mostly red tinted, so this makes it properly red. The next is his dark color scheme. In Brawl, this was an original Fallen Angel type of costume, but since then, Dark Pit became an actual character, so the Brawl color scheme has been adjusted to be closer to Dark Pit. And then of course, Pit has some fully new recolors, starting with this orange and green one. I don't think it has any reference, it's just referred to as Fruit Pit by the developers and in the credits document. Next up is a green costume largely inspired by the color scheme of Viridi, the goddess of nature from Kid Icarus Uprising. 
And then we have a purple color scheme inspired by the Eggplant Wizard, an enemy from Kid Icarus. Finally is a brown color scheme, which is based off of the Centurions. These are soldiers that Pit can call on in Kid Icarus, and it also serves as his final smash in Brawl. In fact, the color scheme for this costume is actually taken from the model used for the Brawl final smash, rather than from their game of origin. For Pit's alternate costume, he becomes Retro Pit. This costume is based on Pit's original appearance in the NES and Game Boy Kid Icarus games, as well as his appearance as a trophy in Super Smash Bros. Melee. This version was also given a Dark Pit Fallen Angel recolor, so we get to also have Retro Dark Pit, which I think is fun. Next we have a green recolor, which gets its color scheme from Palutena's original sprite from Kid Icarus. And then we have a pink recolor, inspired by Pink's association with Cupids. It's also likely inspired by the similar color scheme from Smash 4. And finally, a sort of lavendery blue color, which comes from one of Pit's possible color schemes after receiving upgrades in Kid Icarus. Pit's Z-Secret costume turns him into Eggplant Pit, full-on replacing his head with an eggplant. This can happen in Kid Icarus when an eggplant wizard hits Pit with an attack, and Pit has to seek out a hospital to cure himself. Meanwhile, his R-Secret costume graces Pit with the three sacred treasures, recurring weapons in the Kid Icarus series that boost Pit's powers. This also serves as his final smash in Smash 4. Next up is the shipwrecked captain, Olimar. Two of Olimar's Brawl colors get adjustments for Project M. The first is the black and yellow color scheme. In Brawl, the helmet is made of, like, dark glass or something, which is kind of strange. In Project M, this is changed so that the glass is clear once again, and Olimar's skin is actually made darker. The other adjustment is very small. On Olimar's Louie color scheme, Olimar's three little tufts of hair are now made blonde to match. And now onto brand new colors and costumes. First, he has a blue and purple color, meant to be a more distinct blue team color, but without any reference. Next, he has a purple color, which is also an original color scheme. Next, he has this really cool alternate based on the bad ending of Pikmin 1. If Olimar doesn't get all 25 ship parts, his ship will fail to take off and he will crash down to the planet. The Pikmin then carry his dead body to the Onion, and Olimar revives, becoming part Pikmin, or Pikmar. Next, this costume has a cool recolor, which builds off of Pikmar and turns him into Mushroom Pikmar. Pikmin can be taken over by puff stools in Pikmin 1, so this is a hypothetical costume where just that happened to Olimar. And Olimar's third alternate costume basically turns him into a real-world astronaut, or at least a costume inspired by what real-world astronauts wear. On top of this, he has a black and yellow costume, similar in concept to the recolor he has, and he has a red, green, and blue set as well, naturally for team battles. While Pikmar is technically canon, all three of these costumes originated from a thread on the Project M subreddit by user Kobe D, who made up some concept art that served as the inspiration for all these costumes. Olimar's Z-Secret costume is the President, Olimar and Louis' boss from the first two Pikmin games. Meanwhile, his art costume is Louis himself, the second playable character who first debuted in Pikmin 2. Next, let's talk about the legendary mercenary, Snake. So Snake does have an adjustment to one of his costumes from Brawl, and that is to make his blue team costume stand out more. In Vanilla Brawl, the costume really blends in with other costumes, especially in the middle of a match, so this was improved by making it a deeper blue. Moving from there, Snake has a brand new alternate costume, dressing him up as Big Boss or Naked Snake as he appeared in Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, with the inclusion of the eye patch that he would get during the course of the game. This costume also features three recolors. First, we have a red outfit, which uses the fire camouflage from Metal Gear Solid 3. Next, we have a blue color using the water camo, also from Metal Gear Solid 3. And finally, the black camo, which is just all black. And that is also from Metal Gear Solid 3. Finally, as an alternate for Big Boss, we have the Tuxedo costume. The Tux is a staple reward throughout the Metal Gear Solid series, and in the case of Snake Eater, it's unlocked after completing a playthrough of the game. The other alternate costume for Snake is Metal Gear Solid 1 Snake, naturally based on his appearance in that game. This costume is actually a modified version of Snake's appearance in Smash 2, the Brawl mod we talked about previously, which set out to design each character as if they had hypothetically been included in Melee rather than Brawl. And naturally, this costume has three original recolors, red, green, and blue, to offer team colors for this specific costume. Snake's Z-Secret costume is Iroquois Pliskin, a false name that Snake uses while disguising himself in this same outfit. His R-Secret costume is a Big Boss outfit, featuring a formal military suit and a beret, which is an appearance that Big Boss has in Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. 
All right, so I was way out of my depth on the Metal Gear Solid stuff, so let's move on to the final franchise left to cover, the Sonic series, starting with the blue blur himself. Sonic had a complete overhaul of his alternate colors because, you know, no one just wants different shades of blue. Sonic first has a red color scheme. This is an original color simply to serve the red team. However, before the Project Dem development team ceased development, the plan was to eventually turn this into a costume that referenced Dr. Eggman, with his iconic goggles and boots. The next costume is a purple color, again simply a more distinct color. It's speculated that this costume too would have had an eventual reference, with Blaze the Cat, Big the Cat, and Espio all being common theories, but nothing has ever been confirmed for this one. Next we have a green color, made just for the green team. This was eventually going to become a reference to Jet the Hawk, but again development ceased before this was realized. And then we have a semi-alt that was actually executed, a black color scheme that is a clear reference to Shadow the Hedgehog, complete with matching wristbands and shoes. After that we have a yellow alt, and while many will say that this is supersonic, the shoes tell us a different story, showing us that this is actually Miles Tails Prower, Sonic's right hand man. The final semi-alt Sonic has is based on Silver the Hedgehog, once again with matching wristbands and shoes to the original. Sonic's first alternate costume is none other than Jet Set Sonic. This is a costume combining two Sega properties by dressing Sonic up in Beats clothing from Jet Set Radio. The colors for Jet Set Sonic are based on other Jet Set Radio characters. The green outfit is based on Gum. This red outfit comes from Cube. And this brighter blue one is a reference to Mew. Project Plus decided to rework these colors into their own versions of the colors, however they are all still references to the aforementioned characters, they've just been reworked. Project Plus also added this brand new purple color scheme for Jet Set Sonic. The art team was looking for a new color to add, and one of the devs really likes purple Sonic, so they just rolled with it. Sonic's other alternate costume has him put on his racing suit, only available in the multiplayer of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle after every Sonic mission has been cleared with an A rank. And this costume also comes with three recolors. Green, purple and blue, and black. Though as far as I can tell, none of these have any references, they just complete the team set, and then the devs threw in a black color as well. Sonic's Z-Secret costume is an oddball. It's not exactly what you'd call classic Sonic, but it's certainly not modern Sonic either. And that's because it was designed for the Brawl mod Smash 2, designing Sonic as if he'd been released in Melee. So I guess this design would probably be Sonic Adventure 1-ish. Meanwhile, his R costume is Werehog Sonic. Now this is obviously not the true Werehog, which actually changes Sonic's proportions considerably, but this costume gives Sonic some of the same changes, most notably his fur. And finally, we have the newest character to Project M, the boy who don't chuckle, Knuckles. Knuckles was one of the planned future characters for Project M before they suddenly ceased development. The files got passed around and work was quietly done, and inevitably your boy got finished and included in the game. Five of Knuckles' first six colors unfortunately don't have any references. Green, blue, yellow, cyan, and black are all basically just original colors. Knuckles' white recolor is based on Mecha Knuckles, a robotic version of Knuckles built by Dr. Eggman during the events of Sonic Advance. For Knuckles' next color, we have a lighter red, almost pink color scheme, which is based on Knuckles' color scheme from Sonic Mania, a successor to the 2D origins of the Sonic series. The next color is a more toned down red with some white stripes on Knuckles' quills. This is based on the Knuckles clan, a tribe of echidnas that lived thousands of years ago and who are the ancient ancestors of Knuckles himself. Next, we have a purple semi-alt, which is based on Espio the Chameleon. Espio first debuted in a spin-off game called Knuckles Chaotix as one of the game's playable characters. You're gonna see a trend here, as the next costume is a green semi-alt. This is based off of Vector the Crocodile, who also first appeared in Knuckles Chaotix. And the final semi-alt is an orange one based off of Charmy B, again first debuting in Knuckles Chaotix. Espio, Vector, and Charmy are all a part of Team Chaotix in Sonic Heroes as well, which is likely the reason that these three costumes were given to Knuckles. They debut from a Knuckles spin-off game, but then also they're a team unto themselves. Finally, Knuckles 2 has an alternate costume just like Sonic, Jet Set Knuckles. Giving Knuckles these costumes gives the devs an opportunity to reference even more Jet Set Radio characters. The default costume here references Garam. The green color scheme comes from Yo-Yo. Next up is a blue color, which is a nod to Korn in Japan and Tab in the international versions of the game. And finally, the black color, which is based on DJ Professor K. 
and for Knuckles' secret costumes. His Z-secret costume is Cowboy Knuckles. This is based on his appearance in Sonic the Hedgehog the Movie, a two-episode OVA developed in 1996. And his R-secret costume gears him up in the equipment that he wears during the events of Sonic Adventure 2. And with that, we are finally done. I really wanted to go all out for this video because frankly, Project M changed my life. Without Project M, I never would have gotten into competitive Smash, which never would have steered me towards Smash content creation, and I wouldn't be here today making this video for you all. So this game, this mod, whatever you want to call it, I just appreciate the hell out of it and I wanted to do this video justice. Thank you all so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to like and subscribe. I'll catch you all next time, and please remember to be good to one another.